Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Emma Rimaike, and I'm the founder of Quantum Cybersecurity Skills. With me today, I have Michael Fontner. Uh, Michael, please introduce yourself. Yes, hi there. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Michael Fontner. Um, I'm working right now in IT security with um, focus on application security at Granke Digital, which is a subsidiary of Granke AG, and they're doing um, financial business. Fantastic. So we 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 discussed we're going to cover today uh, two major questions. So one of those will be related to AI, artificial intelligence, how far it can bring you in the process. You know, there is also an element of controlling, you know, who is going to control uh, AI if mm -hmm. it goes uh, wrong, you know. If, if you have algorithms, how to make sure that algor algorithms are um, of AI are properly designed? You know, do we have regulations and so on? So, you know, let's let's talk about AI and your insights uh, <laughs> and challenges uh, for the businesses today. Well, uh, about AI, my main concern is especially as we now evolve into having a little bit better AI, so-called, right? Artificial and intelligence. I have seen a lot of artificial and not so much intelligence yet. So the first things that are slowly starting to show are now, let's say, third, fourth, fifth generation of AI evolvement. And they train themselves by now. So one of the major concerns will be how do people know what the algorithms are doing already? Because nowadays it's pretty much like, well, it's a software problem. Nobody can do anything anymore. And seeing as I was in QA for a longest part, uh, that doesn't sit well with me. You know, you cannot simply put software out there yeah. and then uh, say, well, uh, it's doing something and it should be all right. That doesn't work anymore. That wouldn't have brought anyone to the moon, right? And they did it with a little bit less than a Commodore 64 and it just worked. And when I look at intelligence, then uh, algorithms are very far and pretty good, but I don't see intelligence yet. The intelligence still has to be put in from the by the humans. I mean, you can have... Um, now sophisticated stuff uh, which is working with beha behavioral yeah was that correct analytics. yeah yeah thank you uh yeah analytics and stuff like dark trace which pretty much learn by themselves of what is normal in your network or not so and now we look at the solar winds hack and then you wonder if any of these hacked institutions which were manifold uh, you 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 think they would have AI sit there as well, especially those high class thingies like CIA, FBI, and whatnot. And um, if I were the perpetrator, I would have just get my backdoor and then train these AIs in a way so that they see my actions normal. And I can shake the feeling that this is what happened too, because I mean six, seven, eight months undetected by anything. I mean, you, you have scary. to admit that was that. No, yeah. And freaking brilliantly done. I mean, wow. Mm. They just, I mean, I think they had an overload. They, they could choose the raisins out of the cake, right? Kind of like, oh, we try this and this because everybody was compromised. Yeah. Okay. Opening brackets. This is what the you know once again, brackets closed. So this is something completely different, right? They want to have their legal backdoor. And uh, yeah, this is going to be really interesting. And AI is not the solution to everything, in my yeah. opinion. It can help a lot and it will help when you have the, uh, the behavioral uh, analysis and also in, in finding flaws in huge complex convolutions of code because I mean we put more complexity on code the further we go I mean we had 
DevOps, now we have DevSecOps, then we had containerization, we have microservices in containers, we have container farms, we have uh, now we have IT, um, 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 hardware less infrastructure, uh, infrastructure yeah. via code, or how exactly you know it, I don't know. And they're still making the same mistakes. I mean, I saw a test for someone who's doing his infrastructure, and the first basic mistake they made was like, um, we take user input and don't sanitize. Yeah, great folks. That was already an error th done 30 years ago. Yeah. And no, mm. go, go, go on. No, no, it's fine. So this is, I mean, you, you need to educate people and yeah. you have to have people in charge to to have because you cannot it society and politicians and and whatnot they will not very much longer tolerate uh, engineers telling them yeah you know it was a software algorithm and uh, pff, nobody can do anything no that that I, window is closing rapidly i agree it, it, there, there was a notification two months ago or something uh, from one of us uh, states saying it's illegal to pay ransomware for the organizations you know so i think this this will scale um oh, yeah. and i've been reading over the weekend um one scientific paper about uh, assigning network traffic to the waves Mm -hmm. uh, sound waves okay. so you know how and and uh, there was um the, the scientific paper focused on how this those sound waves assigning to the traffic network could be translated into security operations uh, services you know to detect mm -hmm. uh, to better capture um any any changes you know so that okay. that was that was an interesting view, but uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, tell me, please, do you see any um, way out of it for, you, you know, right now? Do you see any best practices? What, what could help other org organizations um, to at least partly eliminate this? You know, what, what is your best practice advice? Well, the best practice is, um, especially for techies, we have to step out of the shadows. And we have, I mean, how is it? It is a communication problem. I mean, for most of the time, IT was something like that helped businesses in certain cases, but they still were able to conduct their business even without IT. Yeah. This is not the case anymore. I mean, now with the Corona craziness and stuff, even the last resort of human interaction meetings are online now, like like yeah. the two of us. So yeah. there is everything is digitalized and not even the small bakery next door can can do uh, business without IT because I'm pretty sure they have their, their booking stuff and everything that just, so IT is omnipresent it took over. So what we have to learn as techies, and this is something that we have to do, is we have to learn to communicate to to higher levels, like vice president, C level and everything, to talk boardish, so to speak, to give them a very proper reason in ways they can understand. So this is our, uh, our um, duty. The other duty is that, um, that society and, and the leaders, they have to understand that IT has taken over and they have to make sure that they now start to listen to those people who are techies more closely because we do have solutions and we do have things like AI. Yeah, AI is great, but you still have to have people who test it thoroughly. And even when it evolves, you have to make sure that you find ways I'm not, I have a solution yet, but I know that you can test AI properly. And mm. as far as I do know, Google does a lot of research on how to get biases out and whatnot. And it's not easy because intelligence is so much more than just a little algorithm. Yeah. Um, you have to have uh, someone who takes responsibility. And um, to be honest, if we don't get proper solutions rather soon as the techie, the techie guys everywhere, 
and we find ways we will be regulated and it'll it'll it's coming i mean we were doing business quite unaffected of regulation for quite some time until BaFin came a few years ago and they managed to go in and now we're regulated and we have to fill, fulfill regulations of which some are useful and some are from an understanding that is not IT anymore or never has been and which is complete nonsense. Yeah, we still have to stick to it. So we either get going rather quickly, we move our butts out of our chairs and don't be techies anymore and we go there and tell them proactively, right? Because if we're not active, they will be active for us and I don't think many will like it. Again, you're touching fantastic points uh, which which relates to, uh, I've been asked to share some ideas about 2021, you know, the mm -hmm. trends. And I also included as uh, my vision for 2021, there needs to be more synchro synchronization. Um, technical teams to be business acumen aware. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, business people to be more technical aware in a way. Not, I, of course, we don't expect business people to be to become techies, as you say, right? But mm -hmm. there needs to be more glued, more where more awareness raised, you know. And and um, again, we completed recently a research of fifty global socks. And surprisingly, mm -hmm. you know, when when we asked what are your top three uh, goals of the SOC security operation centers. There was a lot of uh, technical answers, you know, mm -hmm. but as you rightly say, board, the board don't care about how many incidents you, you captured in a month, maybe, you know, for statistics, but does it really translate them, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a language we captured uh, from those uh, 51 was major. We, we stopped it and at the right moment, because otherwise, the you know the um, the plants mm -hmm. could have been shut for a day or or you know or two weeks and it would be billions and billions so and and this um, leads us into another question we 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 said we're gonna discuss during this interview mm -hmm. and uh, this is relating uh, to Scaling security operations, everyone needs to wear a hat of security, be it security engineer, be it, you know, everyone needs to be more cybersecurity aware, I think, for us to be more efficient. And let's take very simple examples. Network operations center, not mm. right. Yeah. There, there is still a lot of duplication of what what they do compared to security operations. You know, it needs to be streamlined better. It needs to be communicated better. You know, so we are not duplicating efforts, or or because of lack of communication, we miss very important uh, intelligence. Right. Uh, also, uh, mm -hmm. communications. I see a lot of uh, communications. Uh, uh, guys uh, converting into communication yep. slash security engineers, you know, uh, Dev DevOps, as you rightly said, uh, has started left becoming DevSecOps, and it it will need to grow into into other departments. So again, what is your insight on this? How do you visualize what's going to happen or best practices? Well, I think what is going to happen is uh, that we have to use the agile mindset in the way it was meant to be actually so that you really have the the in interdisciplinary teams working together closer so that that the business people understand more about they do not have to be the the security techie guys because that's our job but we also have to understand what exactly they want what they need and what can be done and then this is the common grounds we have to find and this is something that real agile teams do i mean i saw many uh, also many people who said agile is uh, yeah this this is crap because uh, it's just uh, for distributing mm. uh, my responsibilities to someone else and someone else does it and i don't do shit I think if you do agile properly, then it's one of the most demanding ways to work I've ever seen because it's 
you, me, everybody. And if it doesn't work, you have a problem. Unfortunately, for, for security by now, it doesn't work also means it's not secure. Yeah. And for that, everybody, I mean, you, you know, um, um, when, when people start programming, it, it, it has to start there. They have to be able to, they, they, okay, they are able. They need to understand that the objects they create have to be secure in themselves already in the time the constructor is building them. So that would be very down level. It is as always a matter of, of how do you communicate how to do it properly. Not, not necessarily security properly because security is only a small aspect of a proper product, right? It has to be done properly so you can use it securely, safely, and it does what you want it to do without too much overhead. Yeah. One of the... Um, one of the very negative uh, examples was the Boeing catastrophes, right? I mean, it boiled down to a friggin' simple software bug. And nobody tested. Yeah, and uh, there are going to be repercussions. I mean, Boeing suffered quite a bit, mm. but that's not the point. It, it means that uh, society is starting to think that we are not taking society, life, and other things seriously, because this yeah. is obviously, I mean, you program something and the thing just rams the airplane right into the ground without more intelligent people being able to do anything, right? And this yeah. is something, I mean, we are, we are fine off. The only thing that can happen to us is that there's fraud and bankruptcy, but no dead ones, at least I hope. But this is this in the end, it'll end up with this. We need to be able to say this is safe. And this is a long winding road ahead of us. And if we don't do it, then people who have no clue exactly how it works will do something. I mean, it already started, right? There is now this initiative where people want to have uh, responsible backdoors. There's um, there are regulations which are good or not so good, like like um, for for HIPAA, right? For for health industry, yeah. Yeah. then uh, PCI DSS for for the people with the credit card stuff. And I saw in the last few years the the way that the people doing the regulations going slowly to the people technical kind of like you you can talk to your auditor and tell him look. I do not have to have segregation of people doing DevOps because doing DevOps, uh, constructing and then deploying right through into production by regulation, it is simply not possible. You're even not allowed to do it. So you mm -hmm. have to find ways to tweak it in a way so that it still works. And then you have to explain it to the auditors and to society and um, politicians so that they understand, mm -hmm. ah, okay, this is even safer than before. So again, it boils down to communication. We have to communicate and um, we have to be so many more people. I mean, uh, I don't know if you read this, the, the cybersecurity talent crunch or something it was called. It was in LinkedIn. I mean, we are missing millions. Yes. And this is again connected to software has taken over. Everybody is in software. Everybody is doing it. I mean, literally. So, we. Yes, um, I even um, I, I even uh, see accelerated. Um, I, I wouldn't call it push, but accelerated uh, education of kids in software. Um, mm. you know, groups and so on. Uh, so not only raising awareness, but probably preparing uh, future generations. And uh, uh, Anissa is also taking a lot of uh, activities to make sure that people who want to, um, you know, change their career, they get proper education into, into cybersecurity. But of course, it, it doesn't, like Rome, Rome wasn't built in, in a day, right? Mm. To have a proper security background it's not it, it doesn't compare 10 years experience uh, bias one week uh, 
you know, course uh, to get yes. a rough idea. But but yes, you're right, and and this gap is is gonna grow from what I see because uh, cybersecurity is 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 getting worse again. Wh- when I'm looking at those recent um, hacks, uh, Soperstaria, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think it was soft. Was it soft Solar show? Winds, you mean? So, so yeah, solar winds as well. Um, um you know when when i look at those and and there was one very very big german um it provider uh, starting with s as i forgot mm-hmm. doesn't matter um so when when i analyze this to me it's it's like uh, giving an indication of trend that hackers are literally looking for most efficient ways to hack not only as many organizations, but when I analyze, to me, it looks like how to bring down uh, on the knees the whole industry, even the whole country, you know, mm-hmm. even maybe, okay, in, in maximum case scenario, could be like COVID, digital COVID-like uh, hack, <laughs> you know, where you yeah. bring the whole uh, the global economy on, on the knees or under your control. But uh, to me, it looks like they are, the hackers are really scaling, you know, it's not longer for them interesting game to hack one big organization, millions of records. They want to, with one hack to have, uh, you know, 10,000 organizations uh, being yeah. affected and so on. So that's that's a very interesting game. We are, I wouldn't call game, but interesting situation we are facing into the future. So, sure. you know, well, I, yeah. I would say they are professionalizing and um, yeah. They are doing what every business does, right? They're trying yeah. to be as efficient and as profitable as can be. Sure. So when you have one hack and get them all, that's great for you because this is a lot of business opportunities. From the view of a of a of a black hat hacker, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to, yeah. I mean, this then is again about um, I think it's not only the technical skills you need to prevent these things which which come from developer devops whoever right i mean i have 20 years in it career now and i've been in devops i've been in in qa i've been in in uh, consulting six years traveling almost the whole world and, and whatnot and um, these little bits and pieces they grow together and you need to have a full-blown team where the people know what to do and and always have in mind is it a, a proper high quality product and is it, and high quality also means secure and yeah. um, we we need to to stop thinking in in our railroads i mean we we had the agility yeah. the agile mindset to break up those silos and what IT operations too, or IT in general, is then they siloing again. I mean, when I just just a look at security, you can do DFIR, you can do um, 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 pattern recognition, you can do forensics, you can do blue team, you can do red team, you can do purple team, you can do application security, whatnot. That's okay, and you need specialists but you also need people who have at least an understanding of all of it and can still communicate with others who have no clue whatsoever. You need to, to, to have, we need to means to express what we are doing in a way that someone who's not necessarily too familiar with it is able to understand. Kind of like yeah. when, I, when I do a presentation to sea level or a little bit further down, most of the time they are completely overloaded anyway and then there's a tiny little mm-hmm. security geek doing whatever so why should i listen to you so um what we learned or what we are trained uh, mostly is that we do three maximum four slides for whatever topic um yeah what is it where are we where do we want to be how do we get there or in that respect how much does it cost right Very cool. and or um, where are we? Why do we need to do that? How much does it cost? And what's the benefit? And I think one of the benefits, for example, is, 
at least in Europe, avoiding GDPR uh, uh, regulation hit, right? When, when you get uh, fined with 4% of your annual turnover per, uh, per case. So mm. let's see, you have a data leak of uh, 10, 15,000 addresses. That would be 10, 15 times, 1,000 times 4%. If you are, if they want to ruin you, they can do it in no time. Yeah, no. So, hundred percent. So, um, no, I I appreciate your your time. So, just to close this again, the best practice to achieve quality, as you say, is through what would you say? Training, penetration, scanning, <laughs> anything? Communication. We have the highlighted. best way. The best way to to reach this proper product that you need to be able to deploy and you are actually responsible for it, right? Because we are still agile, is that you have them all work together and have a mutual understanding of what the goal is. And it has to be done on a secure environment and it doesn't matter if it's on premise or in cloud you are responsible that what you're doing is secure that is safe and that even those who who it is intended for who do have a very small understanding that they can still do it securely that means you have to do all the work, thinking work for them because customers will find a way to wreck your system if you don't they will period it, i mean that the, the, that's why uh, most people say you test in production, which is the first sounds scary, but it makes sense. And you don't only test that it works, you also test that it's secure. You test that you can use it properly. You you have to you have to have a, a, a holographic, a whole round wrapping set of what you have uh, of software, which is product or whatever. Software runs the world, it's our responsibility. And if we don't get a grip rather quickly with our understanding, someone else will, and I'm pretty sure we will not like it. <laughs> I agree with you. No, fantastic. Thank you so much, my, Michael. Um, You're welcome. It was my pleasure having you. Very cool insights. I can't wait to share this video with the, with the listeners so they can oh, think. I hope they can achieve this aha moment and adopt well, I some hope of your thoughts. That's, um, just if, if I just only reach one who thinks, hey, we have to do something in our, only a little bit of tweaking in our organization and then we can reach this proper better grip, I'd be totally happy because I still see in our, um, in our environment, we know where we want to go, but it's still... As the Beatles already sung it, a long and winding road, and it's still going to take some time, but at least it is important that you make the first step at some point on your journey, because being secure is so much more than only secure software or secure network or secure whatever. Fantastic. Well, yeah. on this note, thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Emma.